Hi, and thanks for logging on to the Daily Dvar Halacha. And here's a brand new Halacha for you, and it's for Sunday, 18th day of September, 15th day of Elul. Here we go. Now, don't think I'm going to be crazy now if I start giving you the laws of Erev Yom Kippur and then Yom Kippur, because we got to pace ourselves. By the time Yom Kippur arrives, we'll need to be doing, of course, many, many Sukkot laws. So that's why we have to get ahead. Here goes. On the day of Erev Yom Kippur, it is a mitzvah to eat. A mitzvah to eat on Erev Yom Kippur. So that means... Uh, eat on Erev Yom Kippur, of course, but it also means that when eating, it would be a good idea for you to think, I'm, I'm fulfilling a mitzvah. You never get to do that so powerfully to say my eating is a powerful mitzvah, but on Erev Yom Kippur, it's that. And watch for, happens to me sometimes, I don't know if it happens to you, you'll kind of feel that on any given day you eat like kind of normally. On Erev Yom Kippur, there's like a evil desire, a Yetzirah working against you to push you away from mitzvah, and you'll actually find yourself busy doing stuff on Erev Yom Kippur and say, oh my gosh, it's 11 o'clock, I didn't eat breakfast. Now, I know that might happen to you on some days, but there could be some stuff going on where it's going to like accidentally kind of happen to you because the Yetzirah, the evil desire, is uh, kind of working against you on Erev Yom Kippur to try to stop you from your usual eating so that you won't accomplish that mitzvah. Uh, could happen. I've seen it happen to me. Now, there is a special uh, tefillah, a piece of tehillim that we say each morning called Mizmor Lesoda, near the beginning of davening. And that uh, is a remembrance of a carbon called the Toda, the Thanksgiving offering, they call it. And that was brought all the time for Thanksgiving. And we, who can't bring carbonos today, sacrifices because our temple doesn't exist, we say some prayers and we we, we know that that's as close as we could get. The reason I'm mentioning that is because we don't want to say Mizmor Lesoda on Erev Yom Kippur because the Toda carbon wasn't brought on Erev Yom Kippur because it was eaten for more than one day. And you can't eat for more than one day on Erev Yom Kippur. So they didn't bring a Toda carbon on Erev Yom Kippur, so you and I don't say Mizmor Lesoda on Erev Yom Kippur. There's a mitzvah to do tshuva all the time, repentance all the time, but on Erev Yom Kippur, there's a special extra mitzvah to make certain to get tshuva done. You're going to do it on Yom Kippur too, but there's a mitzvah to get that done also on Erev Yom Kippur. Um, if you wrong someone with words and you feel like, okay, I was wrong, but you know, I don't have to ask his forgiveness. It's not like I wounded him, and uh, that's wrong. If you uh, wronged someone with words, then you have to still get their forgiveness. You need to ask someone for forgiveness. By the way, that's a very sensitive thing. If it's something that's going to make him even more upset, he didn't even know that it happened, and you say, I was once speaking in front of a thousand people, and I called you an idiot. Um, you know, if it's something that's going to become worse when you say it to him, do speak to a rabbi about whether you should or shouldn't possibly get matters worse by letting him know about a very hurtful thing that you said that he never even knew existed or happened. Talk to a rabbi so that you'll get it done right. You're supposed to ask at least three times. Like the first time he might say, no, I don't forgive you. Then you're supposed to ask two more times. But they can't be rat-tat-tat each one right away because that's all like one ask. And if he's mad at you, he won't forgive you on any of those three asks that are one after the other. You'll have to ask him in three different times and three different ways, three different, you know, everything's. Then it really counts. If after three times he refuses to forgive you, then you don't have to ask him anymore. Although he's going to be called officially cruel by halacha for not giving you forgiveness, and uh, and you should never do that. If someone comes to you for forgiveness, as much as it may hurt, give the forgiveness because that's how you want Hashem to treat you. That's how you should treat others. If you feel that the person needs to be taught a lesson, you're his Rebbe, you're his teacher in some matter, and he needs to know, don't ever do that to me, then you can put up a tough front and pretend like, come on, come on, really, really get forgiveness because it was really deep and hurtful what you did. But in your heart, in your mind, just decide that I do forgive him. I just need to teach him a lesson. And do speak to a rabbi about how to apply that ruling too. And don't just do it to make somebody grovel because you'll enjoy that. That's not a reason to do that. Um, okay, so that'll end our halachas of some of the forgiveness things for Erev Yom Kippur. Again, we're going to get ahead and be hopefully talking about Yom Kippur till uh two, three weeks before Yom Kippur or something like that. And then we're going to want to jump over to Sukkot's laws so you'll have a lot of them done long before Sukkot arrives. Thanks for logging on and log on again tomorrow for more. Bye-bye.